an era in which we are questioning the effectiveness of markets in producing the kind of society and economy we want to live in, it is more important than ever to have an objective debate about the role that markets and the state play in the economy. Is the state necessary only to correct market failures, or is it also needed to more actively shape and create markets and technological opportunities, and to promote growth which is not only smart, but also inclusive? Today is one of the biggest issues are specific to Europe, but also worldwide, but primarily to Europe is youth unemployment. If you have countries within Europe, and particularly in the Eurozone, with levels of unemployment of youth, of the youngsters, and of course low skilled people, but also high skilled people, which are going up to 50%, I think this is a major problem. Of course, it's not directly a problem of the national state, because you deal with the monetary union, but it's clear that the role of the state is essential here. And I think from a European perspective, the difference between countries in terms of having been able to address youth unemployment, for instance, to training schemes or to reformalizing, to some extent, education and higher education by bringing in training, etc., is the way we should sort of expand to other European countries. If you think we have in, there was a meeting recently between the countries with the most sophisticated training systems, Germany of course, Switzerland, Austria, Denmark, the Netherlands. Well, it's crazy that we have a discussion amongst those countries with their optimal training system, how they can further improve it, and that that knowledge is not used in Spain, in Portugal, in Italy, in Greece. The challenge is really to find ways by which what the universities, what the higher education establishments are doing is actually in line with what firms, companies are looking for in terms of skills. So, whereas I, I believe that skills is not the, just the issue in terms of the current unemployment problem in Europe, it's certainly sure that the state and particularly the interaction, the teaming up of expertise across European countries and across European higher education establishments would be a major contribution to solve or to at least contribute to reduce the problem of high unemployment amongst highly skilled people. Mm -hmm. If we don't do this, I think you will find in Europe, and it's the mirror picture to some extent of developing countries where we saw emerging countries, we will find within Europe submerging economies as Paul Collier as mentioned. And I think the reason why this might go in a reinforcing, declining trend is precisely youth unemployment of highly skilled people. Is that once you get in a situation that you are unemployed as a graduate in physics or in engineering, and after one or two years you're still unemployed, your skills very much evaporate. And I think this is hysteresis in terms of skills. And it's this hysteresis which will further lead to the further decline, the submergence of those economies. I think this is the main concern of European states. In terms of the labour market and social policies, we should, it's a double sort of set of policies we should introduce. We, in the northern countries, again, to, to refer to the previous point about countries like Germany, Austria, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Denmark, the Scandinavian countries, we should certainly make sure that these countries do not reduce the benefits of their social model. We, we really cannot afford that countries like Germany are starting to further lower, to have what Jacques Drez, the, the Belgian economist, called a race to the bottom in the social model, so that we have to the reforms in social policies. These countries are introducing less and less social advantages, in particular here, to the lower skilled people. Because that undermines, of course, the competitiveness or the potential for growth of southern European countries within the Eurozone. Mm -hmm. And by contrast, in the southern European countries, uh, we should sort of think very much on ways in which we could much more link training and skills to the labour market, mm -hmm. uh, and whereby various ways in terms of teaming or in terms of buddies, in terms of helping to assist youngsters to enter the labour market, possibly at on a voluntary basis with a very low wage, with very sort of subsidised wages even, could then start to acquire the on-the-job training skills 
to then become formally part of, of those companies. We really have to address this issue. If we don't, we are really in deep, deep trouble, particularly in the, in the European Union.